Namathu Ratana Tayasa Nyai pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. <coughs> Hello, good evening, everyone. So today is uh, Wednesday, the 25th. November 2020 and this is Ajahn Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center. So as usual I'm here with you bringing some reflections, some stories, some news and some laughs and some jokes and some flirts. <laughs> some truths and some guidance some encouragements helping you to sleep better <laughs> hi then my manish margaret karina yvonne and everyone so <clears throat> today is another a beautiful day yeah and uh, no wind, good sunshine, but very cold. And sadly, we have to uh, cut the one uh, very nice cherry tree just by the cottage um, because of the uh, regulations and insurance purpose. I was sad. So this early morning, uh, about nine o'clock, I just chopped uh, the cherry tree um, uh, so <clears throat> sadly cherry tree is gone so we don't have to uh, worry about it in the meantime now if we want to see uh, the cherry blossoms we may have to go to Japan for a couple of years until our all the cherries blossoms back <laughs> When I was a, a novice uh, monk in the early days, uh, I used to learn a Japanese language. Uh, and then uh, one Japanese teacher, she uh, taught us how to sing a song. Uh, and uh, it was quite fun. Uh, and. Uh, those days I had a dream uh, and a dream that I can go to Japan and visit the Japan uh, and um, so much dreams about Japan uh, and I even you know was singing a song in Japanese those days yeah just a couple of songs that our teacher taught us like one was uh, Sima Utayo or something something <laughs> a terrible singer song <laughs> uh, uh, okay yeah so called Sima Utayo Kaje Mi Tori something something yeah and uh, don't ask me what does it mean because I don't know now it was 20 years ago yeah, 20 years ago Yes, so I chopped the cherry, cherry tree, uh, sadly, so that is me, okay. Right, uh, as, a, uh, as I said yesterday that I will be continuing uh, from the previously left uh, talk, so today and uh, uh, yesterday I gave uh, a background of uh, the first time ever that the Buddha taught a very young uh, teenage or probably just their twenties uh, a businessman and a wealthy lad and they taught the five main teachings known as gradual teachings Anupupikata and this is one of the fundamental teachings uh, for uh, uh, 
the householders and the reason behind that if you know uh, if I teach you about something completely unknown uh, and something that you cannot digest then it will be very difficult and as a result you will be feeling like oh this is rubbish it's not a, a cup of tea yeah and these buddhism or these buddhist monks are weird weird they're talking about something which i can't comprehend and what's he talking about yeah? so like that and even the buddha himself if you know nowadays if he comes and talks about oh uh, something about the f living in the forest and the meditating in the forests and then you know tell us about not to use a facebook and then i believe no one can listen that and no one will be following that at all <laughs> so uh, monks have um, changed or transformed it into new form or new norms uh, like using the social media and facebook and twitter and what else I, I even don't remember all those uh, uh, social medias using now yeah? uh, zoom as well and even I was surprised to see like all the forest monks uh, uh, in our uh, Buddhist practice uh, very famous uh, forest monks nowadays are using social media you know, YouTube and uh, uh, Facebook uh, and a teaching through that uh, and the hundreds of people listening uh, in it too so it's become a norm and I remember when and I think I have told this story uh, a, a month ago or a couple of months ago that when the Facebook was introduced and I was using Facebook for the first time and I was told off and I had to go to the Sangha meeting explaining about my intention you know uh, and i was like bad monk <laughs> chan shujan is a bad monk you know <laughs> so like that you know? and at that time it was serious you know and and i even thought wow uh, i did a great mistake that i had to go and explain to the venerable monks in you know, a senior monks like that yeah, being a bad and now this has become a normal everyone is using it including a forest monks <laughs> so like that you know it's a transform then I believe that you know even the Buddha if he is still alive I wonder how he's gonna manage with it mm -hmm. and many rules will be introduced yeah, and many rules that monks has to follow probably <laughs> because all the rules that the Buddha laid down uh, are basically after someone been very naughty and uh, that's why when you know normally when I look at the uh, Vinaya rules of the monks I found very fascinating you know I sometimes I laugh at all the monks during the time of the Buddha that how naughty they were you know and compared to that i am still pretty good <laughs> you know? so like that that's why you know it's a it's a time to adapt and a time to adjust and you know teaching in a new way a new form and like we know nowadays that you know we cannot come you know we, we cannot ask people to come to the center for the teachings and the meditations and we can't have a face-to-face -face teachings and now it's becoming online teachings and everything become online and a sharing online you know, like that so uh, and it's become a more convenience and then uh, reaching so many people uh, and uh, so many people don't have to travel uh, uh, to the center to the temple they can sit in their own couch and even sometimes maybe birthday shoots 
uh, or sometimes still in the bed uh, having a cup of tea and then listening the talks and saying sadhu sadhu or maybe sometimes thinking of the buddha in their minds and you know uh, still in a birthday suit but thinking of the buddha and then saying bless me bless me <laughs> lots of things can be done now yeah <laughs> lots of things <laughs> so on this basis right buddha also when he came to meet this uh, young lad who was you know prosperous and happy with the material gains and material things felt very bored with this material prosperity uh, and he simply the buddha simply taught him how to let go of this wealth uh, we know we, we call it a uh, generosity learning to know how to give a generosity or being a generous it's called a dana katha uh, so buddha started from teaching how to let go of wealth how to give away the wealth wow. and as a householder you know living in a family it's not easy to let go of any pennies to anyone yeah, and we have a possessiveness yeah, belonging and possessiveness of mind and mind and mind uh, like that and with this concept of the mind uh, we some, you know pretty often we become a very stingy and uh, and with that you know we uh, become a very stingy of about our own uh, dwelling place or the lodgings you know, and you know, even stinginess about you know, just keeping our own wealth only for the families uh, and um, again you know become a very attached to our own status and our own uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, grains and and as one is one one there is one the very interesting one is called stinginess of the dhamma yeah? so that is basically you know despite of a knowing that you can help someone probably your friend or as uh, someone who need help uh, you become stingy say you know rather than giving advice you say mm, i'm not going to tell it because i hate uh, i hate her or i hate him and so i'm not going to advise you know like that and then sometimes someone is in a gravely you know uh, having a suffering from uh, their uh, family uh, breakdown or um, you know, broke or financially finding difficulties and at that time as being you in the state that you have a, a ability to help or at least listen and guide even that you become a stingy and you have no time to listen even to your friend who is in suffering and even you despite of you have a ideas and you're not gonna share you know that like that so according to the buddha's philosophy and this last one regarded as one of the uh, important one that you know one shouldn't be stingy about giving advice or you know telling uh, uh, or just be you know lend, lending your ears to hear their problems uh, sometimes we don't have to advise or sometimes we don't have to say anything all they need is to you know someone to listen and that also can be done too <coughs> okay and further on uh, you know there is a uh, one beautiful story actually a beautiful story uh, there was a uh, one beggar it's called uh, uh, his name was super buddha and um, what happened was that uh, one night he was uh, visiting the city and he realized that there are a big crowd gathering uh, just at the end of the corner you know the big uh, like castle gate and there is so many people gathering 
and this uh, a beggar thought uh, that oh there are uh, so many people and you know, there is a crowd a gathering there must be some food for uh, him uh, both you know, stable and non-stable foods so he went into the gatherings and realized oh there is no food distributions but rather the buddha who is well known is giving a talk so he sat down and oh, since there is no food uh, it's okay i will have you know a listen a talk from this well-known uh, uh, monk uh, so he sat down and listened at that time the buddha uh, thought you know that this crowd who would be able to understand the teachings tonight or enlightened so then uh, buddha simply channeled his the, uh, not his compassion towards all the people and as we know that uh, through the practice of a meditation if you have gain some you know <clears throat> supernatural powers through the stillness of your mind and there's a possibility that you will be able to read others mind okay similarly the buddha did that i remember in a, a early years of our center people came to meditate at the center and then was asking that achan achan can you read my mind <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, so and I used to say that if I read your mind you know why do I want to know you all rubbish in your mind <laughs> I already have more rubbish in my mind <laughs> uh, so it's not uh, that we can't but we you know it's waste of time uh, knowing others mind because uh, we can s see from our own experience that how much we are thinking negatives and if we can read others mind and then we will be you know simply accumulating so much rubbish from others and taking too many rubbish <laughs> so uh, and I told him I told told and I told that time that no I don't want to know you know, although you know, there were often times I did uh, have this uh, sense of understanding but I think it's not good so like that anyway uh, so the Buddha uh, he gazed his eyes and a compassionate eye among the crowd and uh, he saw this uh, a beggar yeah? this beggar uh, his name was uh, Super Buddha yeah, and then uh, he realized that ah this man is going to realize the Dhamma today so with that then he the Buddha simply uh, gave the teachings which is again these five gradual trainings starting from learning to give and, the, and then uh, practice of a sealer yeah and then an uh, attainment of a heavenly abodes and uh, and a giving up uh, uh, renunciation uh, and um, the attainment of you know the ability to let go of essential pleasures and sexual needs and something like that when he listened that talk and he realized wow that's amazing yeah and he realize that this although he didn't have anything to give to the buddha but he realized that he can give so much so he went up and then he offered himself to the buddha saying that i offer to offer myself to the buddha please accept me as your disciple uh, like that and further on and uh, uh, there is a, a saying uh, that uh, uh, what you give you have gain what you keep you have lost because whatever you have given while you are alive uh, during this time when you are giving with your consciousness with your good and uh, thought and uh, and uh, intending for the good results 
once you have given it gives you a fruit of a pleasure uh, and then it will be remain with you at all the time uh, even after you pass away but so whatever you have kept with a stinginess and that will be left behind and you will have this attachment of i have got this much wealth that much wealth but end of the day if you die and whether well, that will be either someone will be stealing away or either the government will take it away or a fire or the, and then burn it down like that even nowadays you know there are plenty of uh, examples of so many people uh, having uh, good wealth and yet if they haven't written any wills then there will be the whole wealth will be transferred to the uh, government or government will take it over you know like that so whatever you have learn to give and learn to enjoy rather than just accumulation of it and I remember there was a, one uh, uh, a lady you know, who was visiting one of the clients that I normally visit. And then one 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 day one afternoon, you know, uh, uh, she want, she said that she would like to visit uh, one of my clients, and then uh, and said, okay. So I asked permission from my clients, and I took her with me. And after seeing uh, one of my clients uh, was about uh, almost a 70 now uh, and then after seeing uh, she said that oh she would like to offer uh, a bunch of a flower and uh, 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 some uh, this snow chocolates or something and I said to her this is up to you uh, uh, and after a week later, she went back with uh, a flower and this chocolate. And after she visited, and uh, uh, she rang me and saying that she felt very, very good. Although, you know, my client, uh, I didn't know at that time whether he, uh, she liked it or not, but you know, uh, a person. A lady who went and gave this flower and um, uh, this chocolate she felt so happy and she said that I don't know that she uh, is she appreciated of my flower or not my chocolate or not but I feel so good and I feel that I am happy I do not you know want anything in return but I feel happy and that happiness remained uh, with her and then a week later when I went to visit uh, that client and uh, no, she was also ex appreciated by uh, her gesture of a kindness of giving this flower and a chocolate so like that yeah like that the more you give the more you get and then that is the teachings um, that I have been told you know and here in our center as well you know, I give away so many foods to so many people you know? even the food banks I send it to the food banks a lot and our kitchen never been free from all the foods you know? always there and whenever something missing if I say that okay center needs this then so many people just bring it you know out of joy and happiness they simply bring an offer to the center so like that and the picture behind uh, my uh, here his name uh, his name is uh, Lumposot you know he was one of the very famous meditation master you know crystal master so he's gazing a crystal and uh, reciting the samma arahang samma arahang like that his motto is the more you give the more you get and he he, he passed away now 60 years ago uh, 60 years ago but his body is still kept for the veneration and people from all bangkok and even the whole thailand visits him and pay respect uh, and in his name people just give 
to the different uh, schools and uh, hospitals and monks and, uh, 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 and poor peoples like that. So still giving. So that's why this first doctrine uh, that in a gradual training is learning to give. You know, it gives you a joy. Uh, it gives you a happiness. Uh, it gives you satisfaction and pleasure. So that's why you know, Buddha said that the more you give, you feel better. And what you have given, it brings fruit of a pleasure. But what is not given, it will be destroyed. So I end here for tonight's reflection on giving. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for listening. And I will come back tomorrow on the same theme. Uh, following few days, I will be continuing on this theme. And so with this, may you all be well and happy and take care of yourself. May the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you. In a few moments time, we're going to have a evening chanting and guided meditation. Until then, good night and see you shortly. Take care and thank you. Sadhu.